Gold Coast Solar Power Solutions recently installed this 6.67 kilowatt solar power system which is connected to a Solar Edge Store Edge 5 kilowatt inverter and an LG Chem HV 9.8 kilowatt battery storage unit. So today we're looking at the Solar Edge monitoring portal and this is the monitoring portal for the system you just had a look at and you can see here we've got the uh, dashboard view and uh, a layout view. You may have access to the layout view, depends what the uh, installers give you access to and uh, these ones here are more for the actual installers so you probably won't see those. Uh, we've got the overview of the system here which uh, tells us how much power has been produced today, 4.9 kilowatt hours, energy this month produced, lifetime energy, lifetime production of the solar power system and lifetime revenue of the system. Here we have a picture of the solar panels with the sun shining on them and it shows us here how much power the system is producing right now. So 5.04 kilowatts have been produced right now and you can see we've got a green arrow here pointing down to this battery. So that means there's actually power going to the battery right now. 2.75, 2.68 kilowatts has been uh, put from the solar into the battery right now and it's at 72% state of charge at the moment. So here it says it shows as a picture of the house and it shows that the house is actually at the moment using about 2 kilowatts of power. So we've got from the solar power system 2 kilowatts going straight into the house and 2.7 kilowatts going into the battery. So what this system is designed to do is to maximize the self-consumption of solar power. As you can see it's, we've got 0 kilowatts coming from the grid and at times you might see a small amount going uh, from the grid to the house or from the house to the grid and that's because the because the load inside the house and the power being produced is continually changing and the whole system is continually juggling the uh, the power uh, the, the, uh, where the power is actually going to to maximize self-consumption and so as you can see these figures here are always are constantly changing so if we scroll down a little bit, we'll just see what we've got down here. And here you can see we've got the power and energy uh, data which can be shown in the day view, week view, month view or yearly view. At the moment we're on the month view. And so here we have this little bar graph showing the system production. So in this month, 376 kilowatt hours have been produced so far by the solar power system. And it shows us the percentage which has been self-consumed, the percentage which has been exported to the grid. So 24% has been exported to the grid, 76% has been used on site. And you can see here, this is a consumption bar graph and it shows the amount of power which has been self-consumed on site. 284 kilowatt hours of this, this month with 99.3 kilowatt hours of that coming from the battery. So that's been, would normally have been surplus power if there was no battery and uh, would have been going back to the grid and, and the customer would have been getting the uh, very small feed-in tariff. But in this case, it has a, the battery installed. So that surplus power has been going into the batteries and uh, being taken from the batteries as required at night time or it, in the daytime when there's low radiance and you can see here we've got the import amount 88 kilowatt hours in this month has been uh, has sent in from the grid imported from the grid 24 percent of the consumption of this site here we have the number of lines and each cluster of lines represents a day of the month you can see it starting from first second third fourth fifth to the 15th today and the blue line represents self-consumption, the green line represents solar production and the red line re represents consumption. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, click on yesterday and it'll take us to the day view. And here you can see once again the blue is self-consumption, green is solar production and red is consumption. So we only see, uh, in yesterday we can only see a couple of areas where there's actually the red consumption section. So a little bit here right before dawn and a bit uh, a, a smidgen in the middle of the day there. What time was that? Quarter past 12. The rest of the time it's all blue, it's all self-consumption. So the power has nearly all uh, yesterday come from the solar and the battery storage. A mere 5% was actually taken from the grid, 1.29 kilowatt hours. 
and so we can see here from midnight how much power is being consumed about uh, 300 watts of power and that's all been taken from the battery and you can actually see if we, if we go down here to this uh, blue graph underneath this is actually the battery state of charge the battery energy level and so you see battery energy level is 40 percent this is at uh, quarter past one in the morning and it's slowly creeping down creeping down 33 percent creeping down 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 to six o'clock in the morning it's at 15 percent charge and then what's that time quarter past or quarter to eight in the morning it's at 12 percent the uh, LG Chem battery usually, when it gets to about 12 to 11 percent state of charge or energy level of the battery, it'll cut off and uh, and start drawing power from the grid at that time, which is exactly what it's done there at uh, at 6:45 in the morning. We see the battery energy level got to 12 percent, and then we started taking from power from the grid. But then we got to 7.45 in the morning the sun's out and the battery is starting to charge again we can see on this little blue graph here the energy level of the battery it's going up 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 what's that 36% charge 50% charge by 9.30 and by 11.15 it's at 98.5% charge and so all afternoon we can see it's at pretty much full charge 98 99 percent charge and so in this section as we can see on the graph up here we've got this green section here and that is all surplus uh, power so power which wasn't required on site the battery was full so it didn't need that power so that power would be exported to grid that's that's what's made up these 7.73 kilowatt hours of export power 24 percent but as you can see in this morning section this large green section here was all power which was surplus to the requirements of the site but the battery used that power to charge up and so it was self-consumed and then we can see the sun starts going down and the power is still being consumed in the property so the battery starts discharging and covering that power consumption so we can see battery energy level there at 3.15 in the afternoon is 98% and then it's slowly going down as the battery starts discharging into the evening maximizing self-consumption and what was it by midnight so the battery energy level at 11.30 was 29% if we scroll down a little bit further we get a comparative energy graph and so at the moment this system's only been going for oh, a little bit less than a month for example system here so it doesn't really have a long amount of a, a long period of data to show you here but what this would be is as you can see here January February March April the whole year laid out and it will give us a comparative energy so it'll give us a bar graph of of each month's power production and what would normally happen is uh, in the summer months it'll be quite high it probably get higher than this 400k and as we come into autumn it'll start dropping down dropping down to winter is at the lowest point when the sun's at the uh, the lowest uh, lowest pit, lowest angle in the so in the sky and when the days are the shortest the, it's the lowest it's the time of the lowest solar power generation and as we come into spring the days start getting longer the sun gets a, a lot higher in the sky and we start seeing production rise, rise, rise up into a summer again, where it's a uh, maximum. Over here we've got the uh, environmental benefits of the system, just a bit of interesting information. Tells you how much carbon dioxide emissions have been saved from the solar power system, uh, producing the power from the sun rather than from a coal-fired uh, power station. We've got the equivalent trees planted and the amount of light bulbs powered for a day and we've got a little picture on the side as well so that gives you a bit of an idea of the solar edge monitoring portal if you've got a system with a battery so like this, such as a storage solar edge inverter with the LG Chem HV 9.8 kilowatt hour battery that this customer has I'm just going to quickly show you 
what a solar edge monitoring portal site looks like if you don't have a battery but you've got an energy meter. So here's a site here. So you can see in this picture at the top here we don't have any battery anymore because there is no battery. But it tells us what the solar power system is production producing right now, how much of that power has been consumed in the house and how much power has either been uh, going back to the grid as surplus or been taken from the grid to power the house such as at, at night time. Obviously there's no battery in place. At night time this is going to be zero and all the power would be coming from the grid. Now uh, in this case you can see we've got 1.63 kilowatts of solar being produced, 1.63 kilowatts being consumed in the house, zero kilowatts going to the grid. So at the moment this, this house's load is max matching the solar power production perfectly. And that's because we've got a device installed at this site called Solar Immersion. And what that does is send is, is continually monitor the power uh, surplus on the property. And if it sees any surplus at all, it'll actually shoot that over to the hot water system to, to heat up the hot water system with surplus solar power. So effectively using the uh, hot water system on the property, I'm sorry, I may have said solar hot water system, then I didn't mean hot, solar hot water system, it would be for an electric element hot water system. So if it sees any surplus solar power, it'll uh, throw that over to the electric hot water system to use surplus power to heat your hot water rather than taking power from the grid to do that. So it's a, it's a really good way to maximise your self-consumption on a property. Now, if you just have a solar edge solar inverter and you have the monitoring portal but you don't have a solar edge electricity meter and you don't have a battery, what you'll see in the portal is something like this. So, once again, it shows the current power energy today, energy this month, lifetime energy and lifetime revenue, but it doesn't have data on what the house is consuming or what power is coming from the grid or anything like that. So all it gives you is the system production on that day. And then it gives you a graph of how the system is produced during the day. So uh, quite a bit more basic, but look, it still gives you the information about your solar power system. It doesn't give you any information about the power consumption on the site. So look, that's a bit of a overview of the solar edge monitoring portal for you. So as you can see, with uh, the the battery installed and a storage solar power system, it, re it gives you a really good overview of the system production. It's very easily uh, understood and just very nicely presented in a graphical format that anyone can easily understand. So you can see right now, five kilos of power is coming from the solar panels. Three kilos has been pushed into the battery right now, 78% charged already. 1.8 kilowatts coming uh, being used in the house and the grid is just offsetting it very slightly at the moment, 0 0.06 as the uh, system will continually adjust itself and there you go, it see it's back to zero. So look, I hope that's been helpful for you in understanding the Solar Edge Monitoring Portal. Thanks for watching this video.